Hey everyone, this is Eden back for another video. This time we are actually going to jump into reinforcement learning, which is something I've really been looking forward to because it's personally one of my favorite parts of machine learning. So just jumping off, what we're gonna use for this tutorial is OpenAI's Gym, which is a library that is kind of made for reinforcement learning, particularly to train certain agents and discover certain things. Last time, in our tutorials, what we did was we did supervised learning. Supervised learning is learning by example, watching and then learning from that. This time we're doing reinforcement learning, which is a different category of machine learning. And the way it's different is that instead of watching something and learning from example, we learn by experience. And what I mean by that is think of when you're a kid, right? And maybe you touch like a hot pan or a hot stove and you immediately draw back because it's hot, right? It hurts and you don't want to touch it. And I can probably assume that you're not going to want to touch that again intentionally. Or maybe you got a dog and you're trying to train your dog to sit. Well, what do you do? You wait till it sits. And once it does sit, you give your dog a treat. And then you can kind of train your dog um, to sit by associating the idea of sitting with the idea of giving them a treat. So the idea behind reinforcement learning is that instead of learning by example, you learn by positive and negative rewards. If you get a positive reward, you wanna keep doing what you're doing. And if you get a negative reward, you want to stop doing that. So now back to OpenAI's gym, what this is, is we are going to use this specific environment. Now the video isn't working right here, but if we go to Google, you can kind of see what this would look like and we'll see it when we run it. But this kind of GIF is what we're trying to do, right? So we have this cart and we have this pole that's coming off of it. And the idea is we want to tell the cart to move left or right to keep the pole up. Because if the pole falls, then we lose, or if it goes too far off the screen, we also lose. So the goal is to create an agent, or basically just a program, that can keep this pole up without um, any, without learning from example, just completely learn by itself. We just tell it that when it's keeping the pole up, it's doing a good job. And when it falls, it's doing a bad job. Awesome. So if you don't have Jim, it's super easy to install. If you just open up a command line or terminal, I believe it is pip install Jim. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's it. Yep. Awesome. And then I'm going to go ahead and jump into a Jupyter notebook over here. So the first thing we want to do is get all of our imports. Or first, I should actually mention, I'm going to be following, not exactly, but this kind of was inspired by a tutorial I found online. It was super awesome, a post on Medium. So if you like reading things, this might be a good article to check out. I'll link it in the description, but it kind of describes how to do this. And my code is inspired by this. It's a bit different. Um, I use tflearn instead of tfslim. And to be fair, to be honest, not everything is explained in this text, but the code is good. So definitely check this out if you prefer reading. Um, but now back to this, first we want to get all our imports down. So to import Jim, we just import Jim as you might suspect, and then kind of all our other typical things we usually import. Time, TensorFlow, tflearn, numpy, matplotlib, and seaborn, all for the, all the good stuff. So the next thing we wanna do is we want to actually make our environment. So Jim comes with a lot of different games you can try out. They even have things like Minecraft for more complex challenges. Um, but for cart pull, it is just, we are going to do gym.make cart pull v0 for the cart pull. This is the cart pull environment we're using. So we run that, it will make our environment. And then just kind of how we use this is to create, um, to create our first environment, we want to do this where we say obs for maybe like observation equals the environment.reset. And if we actually print out what obs is, we'll see that obs is four values. So I'm gonna be honest, I don't remember exactly what these four values are, but it has to do with where the cart is and where the stick is. So what's kind of nice though, is we don't even actually really need to know the specifics because the kind of idea behind deep learning is we don't make the features that tell it which way it should go. It can learn from these numbers, but I can, I can guarantee that these numbers um, do give you the positions of everything and it's everything you need to solve the problem. So knowing that, what we can do is we can actually render this, right? So if we do, uh, I believe it's env.render, 
we can actually see our first frame right here. And it's actually crashing on me because I, I think because I didn't give it any more frames. Um, but if we want to make a little for loop right here, or a while loop, we can say while true, uh, what is this, a time dot wait, uh, we can wait like 0 0.005 seconds, and then we can render the environment. Um, so if we do this, what we'll see, or yeah, well actually we won't see much of a change that we still have an issue, uh, <laughs> sleep, my bad, sleep. We still have an issue and that's, we're not actually advancing the program, right? It's still here, but we're not, we're not taking, we're not telling it to take any actions. So to advance this program, what we have to do is we say env.step and we have to take an action. So the action is either, for now, it's zero or one. Zero is, I believe, left and one is right. Um, so if we just do this, now we should be able to see. Oh, it might have went a little too fast. Um, <laughs> so let's retry that. Another thing we can do is we can check to see when it's done. And when it is done, we can restart that. So to check when it's done, this step function right here actually returns a few things. So what it returns is one, our next observation. It also returns the reward. So remember, it's a positive number if it's staying up and a negative number if it falls. Then we also have D, which is whether or not it's done yet, whether or not the game has finished, if we've lost or won. It does go to a maximum of 200 frames. So if we stay alive for 200 frames, we do win. Um, and then the last parameter does not matter. So if we do this, we can check if d equals true, um, if d equals true, well then we can stop. So to stop it, what we're gonna do is, I guess just break, <laughs> we can just break out of this. Um, and then what we all, yeah, so let's just try this out first and see what happens. I'm a little scared, it might go too fast, we might not be able to see what actually happens. Um, and we could, it was way too fast. Let's slow this down a lot and just see one frame at a time. So if we look at this, we can see that as we said zero for the step, it is moving left and it's very quickly gonna fall over and we're gonna lose this. So, yep, we lost right there. It doesn't actually fall all the way down. It just has to fall about, I forget what it is. Maybe it looks like 20 degrees or so. Um, for you to lose. So what we're actually going to do now, and we're going to use this when we create our model, is we're just going to keep running through this up to a maximum of 200 frames because that's where we win. So in our while loop here, we're going to say for i in range of 200. We are going to actually make this a little bit faster, 0 0.05 maybe. Might still be a little slow, let's see. So now if we run this, what we'll see, hopefully, or not. Ah, that's why the reset needs to be in here. We need to reset the environment every time we lose to start over the game. Let's try this out. Hopefully that will do it. There we go. So now we can see that it just keeps moving to the left and it keeps losing. So this is a good start. This is kind of how we use the environment. Um, just kind of looking more into these variables right here, if we want to actually print out which each of these is, we can kind of see, get a feel for how we'll be able to use these. So observation is the current state, R is the reward, and D is whether or not it's done. So if we print these out, we can see we're getting an observation so again, this is like the position of the cart in the pole. We have a reward. So remember positive one while it's staying up and false because this is not yet done. So if we keep going down until we see a true for the done, oh, here we go. So done, this is, um, we have finished. So looks like I, I need to make a little correction because it looks like even though it did finish, we didn't get a negative reward even though it fell. So the idea is just that getting more of a positive reward in this case is a good thing. Of course, if you can get 10 different one rewards, it's much better than five rewards because overall, you know, you're getting more rewards. So thank you very much for tuning into this video. 
now that we kind of know how this environment works and how we can use it, next time we'll actually jump into building our model and making sure we can keep this up. Thank you so much for tuning in for this video and definitely check in for the next video where we will actually start building the model and making it work. If you like this video, definitely subscribe and like. It really helps me out. And also check the link below for the code for this actual video and the final version of this project so you can follow along. Thank you and have a great one. See you guys next time.